Life can feel like a relentless storm, battering you with challenges that make you question your strength and resolve. Trust me, I've been there. There were times I felt like I was drowning in a sea of failure with no life preserver in sight. You might have felt the same way, too. Standing at the edge, wondering if it's even worth continuing. But the truth is, those moments when you're closest to giving up are often when you're on the verge of a major breakthrough. It's in these darkest hours that you discover who you truly are. So, I'm here to share something different, not the usual pep talk, but seven lessons based on stoic philosophy that can help you find that inner strength when you need it most. These aren't feel-good platitudes you've heard a thousand times, they are hard truths, challenging wisdom. They're not always easy to swallow but they have the power to change your perspective and strengthen your resilience. I've used these stoic principles in my own life, and they've pulled me through some of my toughest times. So, if you're ready to confront some unvarnished truths that can help you stand tall when everything else is crumbling around you, stay with me. Let's dive into these seven lessons together. They might just change the way you face adversity. Your journey to inner strength starts now. Let's begin! Lesson 1. Embrace pain as a teacher. Most people avoid pain, but what if enduring it made you stronger? Pain isn't your enemy, it's your greatest teacher. It reveals your limitations and shows you where you need to grow. Stoic philosophy teaches us to confront pain, understanding that suffering is a part of life that helps us mature. Don't shy away from discomfort. Use it to fuel your resolve. I remember a time when I was in the deepest pit of my life. I had just lost my job, and everything seemed to be falling apart. The pain was overwhelming. I felt like I was trapped in a dark tunnel with no end in sight. Each day was a struggle just to get out of bed. I wanted to escape it all. But then I stumbled upon a stoic principle that shifted my perspective. Pain is a teacher. At first, this seemed counterintuitive. How could suffering teach me anything? But as I confronted my pain, I began to see its lessons. It forced me to face my fears and insecurities, to question my values and what was truly important to me. Pain became a mirror reflecting my deepest truths, pushing me to grow in ways I never thought possible. Pain strips away the superficial, it demands you face yourself honestly and without cover-ups. It's in these moments of intense discomfort that you discover your true strength. The world often tells us to avoid pain, seek comfort and ease, but the Stoics know that pain is an unavoidable part of life. Instead of running from it, they embrace it as a crucial part of personal growth. Think of physical training. When you lift weights, you tear muscle fibers, causing pain. But it's that process that leads to muscle growth and increased strength. The same principle applies to emotional and mental pain. It breaks you down, but it also builds you up. Every moment of suffering is an opportunity to become stronger, more resilient. There was a night when I felt utterly defeated. I sat alone in my apartment, consumed by feelings of failure. The weight of my circumstances felt unbearable. But in that solitude, I started to see the lessons that pain had brought me. It taught me about perseverance, patience, and humility. It reminded me that the biggest lessons in life often come from the hardest challenges. Embrace your pain. Let it guide you, showing you where you need to grow and what you need to change. Don't be paralyzed by it. Don't distract yourself or run away from it in fear. Confront it, learn from it, and let it mold you into a stronger, wiser person. Pain isn't your enemy. It's your greatest teacher. And remember, the strength you gain from embracing pain is the same strength that will pull you through your darkest hours. Lesson 2. The Power of Solitude In a world that celebrates constant connection, choosing solitude can seem like a radical act. But stepping away from the noise allows you to find clarity and strength from within. Solitude isn't about complete isolation but an opportunity to reconnect with your inner values and purpose. When you feel like giving up, step back and embrace silence. It might be the most powerful move you make. 
There's a profound difference between being alone and feeling lonely. I used to fear solitude, thinking it was a sign of failure or social rejection. But it was during the most difficult periods of my life, when I felt isolated and disconnected from the world, that I discovered the true power of solitude. Solitude offers a unique opportunity for reflection and reevaluation without the influence of outside opinions and distractions. You can listen to your own thoughts and feelings, confront your fears, question your assumptions, and rediscover what truly matters to you. Think about it. We're constantly bombarded with messages that we need to be connected, to share every moment, to seek validation from others. But this can silence our inner voice. Solitude is a chance to turn down the outside noise and listen to yourself. It's not about becoming antisocial, but finding inner balance and strength. Some of the most life-changing moments in my life have come during periods of solitude. When I lost my job, I felt abandoned and alone. But instead of seeking distractions, I embraced solitude. I went for long walks, kept a journal, reflected on my thoughts, and spent time in meditation. It was in these moments that I found clarity and a renewed sense of purpose. Solitude taught me to be comfortable with myself, to face my fears without the crutch of constant presence from others. It was in solitude that I made some of the most important decisions of my life and found the strength to keep going. Many of the world's greatest thinkers, artists, and leaders have sought solitude as a source of inspiration and strength. They knew that to truly understand themselves and their path, they needed to step away from the crowd. Solitude isn't retreating from life, it's a deeper engagement with it. When you feel like giving up, remember to step back and go inward. It might seem counterintuitive in a world that values constant interaction, but it can be incredibly powerful. Solitude allows you to recharge, reconnect with your center, and emerge stronger and more focused. Embrace the silence, and you might just find the answers you've been searching for. Lesson 3. Letting go of goals. Goals are often seen as essential, but they can also become burdens. When goals start to weigh you down, it might be time to let go. Focus on the process and the present moment instead. Stoics believe in embracing the journey, not just the destination. Releasing rigid expectations allows you to adapt and grow without the pressure of constant achievement. I used to be obsessed with setting goals. I had a to-do list, vision boards, and daily affirmations. I thought that by setting clear and ambitious goals, I could control my destiny. But over time, I realized that my goals were becoming more of a source of anxiety than inspiration. Every milestone missed felt like a personal failure. I was constantly stressed, trying to push my progress, and when things didn't go according to plan, my confidence faltered. It was exhausting, and I began to question the value of goals that were supposed to be driving me forward. The harsh truth is, goals can become shackles. They can trap you in a cycle of striving and disappointment, especially when they're rigid and unrealistic. Stoics teach us to focus on what we can control our actions and our attitude rather than the outcome. The outcome is often outside of our control. When I let go of my rigid goals, something magical happened. I started living in the moment and appreciating the journey itself. Instead of being obsessed with the end result, I focused on the process and doing my best each day, finding joy in the effort. This shift in mindset was truly liberating. Letting go of goals doesn't mean abandoning ambition or accepting mediocrity. It means releasing the pressure of specific outcomes and embracing the flow of life. It's about setting intentions and working hard, but also being open to where the journey takes you. This flexibility allows for growth and adaptation, making you more resilient and less prone to feeling like a failure. One of the deepest lessons I've learned is that life is unpredictable. No matter how meticulously we plan, we can't control every variable. By letting go of rigid goals, we become more adaptable and open to unexpected opportunities. We learn to trust the process and ourselves. Since I stopped obsessing over specific goals, I found more peace and satisfaction in life. I still have dreams and aspirations, but I'm not bound by a specific timeline or outcome. 
I focus on what I can do each day to move forward and trust that the journey will lead me where I need to be. Some of the most successful and happy people haven't followed a rigid path. They've been open to change, willing to adjust, and found joy in the process, not just the result. They understand that true success is about growth, learning, and resilience. When you feel burdened by your goals, take a step back. Let go of the need for specific outcomes and focus on the journey. Embrace the present moment, give your all, and trust that you're exactly where you need to be. Releasing rigid goals can be the key to unlocking a more fulfilling and resilient life. Lesson 4. Seek Challenge, Not Comfort Society often tells us to seek comfort and avoid challenges, but true strength comes from facing adversity, not running from it. Intentionally place yourself in challenging situations to build resilience. The more you confront hardship, the stronger you become. Your comfort zone is the enemy of growth. Step into the storm willingly, and you'll discover your true potential. From a young age, we're taught to seek comfort. We're told to find a stable job, live in safe neighborhoods, and surround ourselves with people who share our views. Comfort is marketed as the ultimate goal. But what if I told you that comfort could actually be a trap, a prison disguised as paradise? For a time in my life, I chose the easy path. I took a stable but uninspiring job, lived a safe but monotonous routine, and avoided risks, thinking I was being smart by protecting myself from failure and discomfort. But deep down, I felt stagnant, like I was merely existing instead of truly living. It wasn't until I started embracing challenges that my life began to transform. I remember signing up for a marathon, even though I wasn't much of a runner. The training was hard, and there were days when I wanted to quit. But crossing that finish line taught me more about my own strength and resilience than any comfort ever could. Challenge forces you to grow. It pushes you to your limits and beyond. When you intentionally seek out difficult situations, you build resilience, grit, and determination. You learn to handle stress and adversity gracefully. Comfort might keep you safe, but it won't make you strong. Think of the great figures in history. They didn't achieve greatness by living in comfort. They sought challenges, embraced risks, and confronted their fears. It was through their struggles and hardships that true greatness was formed. They understood that the path to success is rarely smooth or easy, but it's always worth it. When you choose to confront challenge, you're choosing growth. You're saying that you're willing to endure discomfort to become stronger, wiser, and more capable. This doesn't mean you should be reckless or seek out pain for its own sake. It means recognizing that the most rewarding experiences often come from the toughest journeys. One of the biggest challenges I've ever faced was starting my own business. It was a leap into the unknown, filled with sleepless nights, financial pressure, and constant uncertainty. But it was also one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. I learned more about myself, my strength, and my ability to adapt than I ever could have in a comfortable job. Facing challenges also teaches you resilience. Life is unpredictable, and comfort can make us complacent. When you regularly challenge yourself, you build mental toughness that helps you face whatever life throws at you. You become more flexible, more creative, and more willing to seize opportunities when they arise. The next time you stand at a crossroads between comfort and challenge, choose the path that pushes you forward. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Remember, diamonds are formed under pressure, and so is your true potential. Seek challenge, not comfort, and you'll discover an inner strength you never knew existed. Lesson 5. Distancing from Emotions Emotions are natural, but they can also cloud your judgment and weaken your resolve. Stoic philosophy encourages distancing yourself from your emotions. This doesn't mean becoming cold or indifferent, but gaining mastery over your reactions. By managing your emotions, you maintain clarity and strength in the face of adversity. Distancing isn't about becoming emotionless, it's about taking charge of yourself. I used to be a slave to my emotions. When things didn't go my way, I would get angry, frustrated, or even despair. 
My mood was like a roller coaster, dictated by the swings of life. It wasn't until I discovered the stoic principle of emotional distancing that I began to find true peace and strength. Emotions are a natural part of the human experience, but when they control us, they can lead us astray. We make rash decisions in anger, become paralyzed by fear, or drown in despair when faced with obstacles. Stoicism teaches that while we can't control external events, we can control our response to them. Distancing from emotions doesn't mean suppressing them or becoming insensitive. It's about recognizing your emotions, their source, and then choosing a rational response. It's about being able to maintain focus and composure no matter what life throws at you. I remember a particularly difficult period when both my personal and professional life seemed to be falling apart simultaneously. My initial reaction was panic, letting stress consume me. But I decided to practice emotional distancing. I started by acknowledging my emotions without judgment. I recognized my fear, anger, and sadness. Then, I stepped back and asked myself, what can I control in this situation? This shift in perspective was truly transformative. Instead of reacting impulsively, I started responding thoughtfully. I became more focused on finding solutions than dwelling on the problem. My clarity and composure not only helped me weather the storm but also inspired confidence in those around me. Look at the great leaders and thinkers of history. They weren't emotionless, but they mastered their emotions. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic, faced monumental challenges, yet his writings reveal a man who maintained inner peace through rational detachment. Nelson Mandela endured decades of imprisonment without letting bitterness consume him, emerging as an icon of hope and forgiveness. Emotional distancing is a skill that takes practice. It starts with awareness, recognizing your emotional triggers and your reactions. When you feel a strong emotion rising, pause, take a breath, and give yourself a moment to rationally assess the situation. Ask yourself, is this reaction helping me or hindering me? Another powerful technique is to shift your perspective. Instead of viewing an obstacle as a disaster, see it as a challenge or an opportunity for growth. This change in mindset can transform your emotional response from despair to determination. When you learn to manage your emotions, you become more resilient. You can handle stress, disappointment, and even tragedy with grace and strength. You become a stable pillar for yourself and those around you. Emotional distancing isn't about becoming cold, but achieving emotional intelligence and control. Lesson 6. Become your own advocate. Don't rely on others to validate your worth or fight for you. Stand up for yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. Self-advocacy is recognizing your value and demanding respect. It's taking control of your life instead of waiting for others to give you opportunities. Be bold, be assertive, and don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. I used to be someone who constantly waited for others to recognize my worth and give me what I deserved, whether it was a promotion at work, validation from friends, or praise from family. I believed that if I just worked hard and kept quiet, good things would come to me. But the reality is, waiting for others to champion you often leads to disappointment. The truth is, no one will fight for you as fiercely as you can fight for yourself. The world is full of noise and distractions, and if you don't assert your value, it's easy to be overlooked or taken advantage of. Becoming your own advocate means realizing your worth and ensuring that others recognize it too. There was a moment in my career when I realized this. I was passed over for a promotion that I knew I deserved. Instead of silently accepting it, I decided to act. I scheduled a meeting with my boss and presented my accomplishments, my contributions, and why I believed I was the best candidate for the position. It was a nerve-wracking experience, but it worked. I got the promotion because I spoke up and made my case. Self-advocacy isn't just about career advancement. It's about setting boundaries in your personal life, standing up to unfair treatment, and ensuring that your needs are met. It's about becoming assertive in all areas of your life. This doesn't mean becoming aggressive or disrespectful. It's about being clear, confident, and consistent in what you deserve. Many people, 
especially those who are naturally introverted or conflict averse, find it challenging to self-advocate, but it's a skill that can be developed. Start by recognizing your accomplishments and strengths. Write them down if you need to. Practice speaking up in small ways, whether it's sharing your ideas in a meeting or expressing your needs in a relationship. The more you do it, the more confident you'll become. Think about the successful people you admire. They didn't get to where they are by waiting for others to open doors for them. They knocked on doors themselves, and if they didn't open, they found another way in. They were their greatest advocates. This is a lesson I've seen time and again in the lives of great leaders, entrepreneurs, and change makers. One of the most empowering realizations you can have is that you are responsible for your own destiny. This means taking control of your life and not relying on others to push you forward. When you self-advocate, you take ownership of your narrative. You become the author of your own life, not just a character waiting for something to happen. There will be times when self-advocacy feels uncomfortable. You might fear rejection or backlash, but that discomfort is worth it. Every time you stand up for yourself, you reinforce your self-worth and build your confidence. You send a message to the world, and to yourself, that you deserve respect and opportunity. Self-advocacy also means protecting your mental and emotional well-being. It's about saying no to things that drain you and saying yes to things that nourish you. It's about prioritizing your needs and not feeling guilty about putting yourself first. Remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. Self-advocacy is a form of self-care. So, the next time you find yourself waiting for someone else to recognize your value or give you what you deserve, remember that you have the power to advocate for yourself. Be bold, be confident, and be assertive. Become your own champion and take control of your destiny. These lessons might be controversial, but they hold deep wisdom. Before you give up, consider applying these stoic principles. Strength doesn't come from avoiding discomfort, but from confronting it head on. Be resilient, and remember that the greatest challenges often precede the greatest breakthroughs. Life is a journey with peaks and valleys. There will be times when you feel invincible, and times when you feel like you're about to fall to your lowest point. It's in those difficult moments, when you feel like giving up, that stoic lessons can guide you through, reminding you of the inner strength you possess to endure, overcome, and continue to move forward. Remember those who have walked this path before us, from ancient Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Epictetus to modern icons who have navigated through immense challenges. These individuals have shown us that embracing hardship, upholding integrity, and advocating for ourselves are not just philosophical ideals, but practical tools for everyday life. I've experienced my own moments of doubt, when the pressures of life seemed too heavy to bear. But it was in those moments that I found strength from these Stoic lessons. They weren't just abstract ideas, but lifelines that could help us navigate our darkest days and move toward the light. Every time you choose to endure, every time you choose to push through pain, you are writing a new chapter in your story, a story of resilience, courage, and triumph. You are not alone on this path. We all face challenges and hardships, but together, we can overcome them. Let these lessons guide you when you feel like giving up. Remember, you have the power to change your narrative, to keep fighting for your dreams, and to become the best version of yourself. The road ahead may be arduous, but it is also brimming with incredible opportunities. By embracing the wisdom of Stoic philosophy, you can navigate the twists and turns of life with grace and strength. You can find clarity in chaos, resilience in hardship, and hope amidst despair. You are stronger than you think and your journey is never truly over. Be resilient, keep going, and embrace the journey. Remember, you are capable of more than you imagine. Keep the flame of hope burning bright, and let it guide you through the darkest nights. If these lessons have resonated with you, subscribe to this channel for more insights into Stoic philosophy. Together, we can build a strong and inspiring community. Thank you for watching. And remember, the best is yet to come.